Okay. Uh, let me see this. What do I have to do to? Does it work, or do do I have to? Uh, I have to. It works. It works fine. It, ah, okay, right. Mm -hmm. So maybe I should uh, start. Okay, so let me get started and uh, remind you that I left a gap last time. Um, but now I fully understand this proof of Bojanitsan about uh, the solutions of y double plus y equals e to the power x squared. <clears throat> And um, I'll write it up for you and make it somehow available <clears throat> so that this um, story is, is complete. <clears throat> so, uh, so this is lecture 11, and um, I start now a new section about asymptotic couples. <clears throat> um, these are useful gadgets to better understand the asymptotics of um, Hardy fields, uh, trend series fields and the like, right? In general, um, valued fields with a derivation on it, which is somewhat, which is um, reasonably compatible with the, um, yeah, such that the valuation and the derivation are um, compatible in certain ways. <clears throat> um, right. Okay, so let's introduce this, or let us motivate this um, by Hardy field. So let let uh, H be a Hardy field. V uh, C it's 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 natural valuation. Gamma it's natural valuation. Um, Yeah, maybe to remind you, um, uh, the natural valuation has um, 
the set of bounded elements is as its valuation ring here yeah, with valuation ring. Um, oh, this is should be H, of course. Valuation ring um, OH is all F in H, F is in, this, in the ordering of the Hardy field is an absolute value less than some natural number. So this means F is um, is dominated by G is equivalent to the valuation of F greater than equal to the valuation of G. Uh, so you can think of, of the value group gamma as, um, <coughs> as the equivalence classes yeah. under the relation of being asymptotic too. Yeah? So you can think of gamma as gamma as modulo the the equivalent relation of being asymptotic too. <clears throat> um, but for various reasons, we write this group additively. Um, and you also see that there is a reversal of the ordering, so to say. The domination relation um, is translated here into the greater than or equal relation on the order superior group. This has various traditional reasons, uh, but I'm not going to go into that now. <clears throat> um, right. So <clears throat> now we, we, I already talked about asymptotics on Hardy fields and uh, recall that um, you have that if F and G are asymptotic, then so are its um, then also f prime and g prime are asymptotic provided f and g are um, not um, asymptotic to one yeah, or f yeah. so non-zero f g which are also not asymptotic to one right and you see that um, this leads to a um, an operation on the value group, yeah? <clears throat> namely. Um, so this leads this yields. Oh, maybe I I um, I should go to another blackboard um, to avoid obstructing your view. So this uh, yields. Uh, a function on the value group to itself. Um, so this or this, this induces, so to say, <coughs> induces uh, a function gamma gamma prime from the non-zero elements of gamma into gamma where um, well how is it defined if gamma is the valuation of f then gamma prime is the valuation of f prime since the valuation of f prime is completely determined by the valuation of f because of this <coughs> this is um, this makes sense <coughs> right um, and here F is again, it's a non-zero element whose um, valuation is not zero or equivalently F is not asymptotic to one, right? Being asymptotic to one is the same as saying that the valuation is zero in the value group. <clears throat> um, okay, now it turns out and um, that a related operation is actually uh, a bit more useful. It turns out Turns out that uh, the related the 
related operation where instead of the derivative you take the logarithmic derivatives the related operation the related uh, function gamma goes to gamma dagger which is by definition gamma prime minus gamma which again is defined on the set of non-zero elements of gamma um, has some extremely useful properties extremely and that was really uh, the discovery of uh, Rosenlicht <coughs> useful properties who introduced the notion of an asymptotic couple <coughs> um, and so that is what we it turns out for example that this map or this function on gamma is itself a valuation well now of course not a valuation on the field but a valuation on uh, on an abelian group <coughs> um, but um, right <coughs> um has to extremely use now let me actually mention uh, some first of all um <clears throat> if you take the dagger of alpha plus beta this is greater than equal to the minimum of alpha dagger and beta dagger yeah? recall that gamma is an ordered abelian group so uh, um right here again uh, of course you have to make some assumption so that this is all makes sense alpha beta and alpha plus beta have to be non-zero for this for all the quantities there to be defined <coughs> and um well uh alpha dagger is greater than beta prime for all well whenever alpha is positive and beta is um, <clears throat> sorry whenever let me see what did i write um, yeah uh, let's see alpha is not zero and beta is positive yeah? alpha for alpha not zero and beta positive um, <clears throat> and um, let me see so basically this is saying that um, sorry it's the other way around uh, the other way around yeah? Uh, logarithmic derivatives of non-trivial elements strictly dominates derivatives of infinitesimals that's how you can how you can uh, <clears throat> think about that and then the fact that the derivation of an infinitesimal is infinitesimal basically means that alpha prime is positive for alpha if alpha is positive so this expresses the fact that um, the derivative of an infinitesimal in a Hardy field is uh, is again infinitesimal. <clears throat> okay, so this leads to the, the general definition of an asymptotic couple, and it really um, pays off to develop this uh, the theory of asymptotic couples for its own sake uh, for a while. Uh, so definition. Rosenlicht. Um, an asymptotic couple. It's just a pair. <coughs> Gamma C, where gamma is an ordered abelian group, yeah, consisting of, of 
an audit a building group and again uh, in in um, it's i think more or less standard and i will follow that um habit of um when you say an order of being group you actually mean a totally ordered bearing group yeah just like when people say ordered field they really mean a totally ordered um field and of course the ordering is compatible with the well, in this case with the is translation invariant, right? <clears throat> uh, so compatible with the uh, abelian group structure <clears throat> consisting of an ordered abelian group gamma. And again, we um, also, in accordance with convention, we uh, write this additively, <clears throat> right? So um, ordered abelian group gamma <clears throat> um, and a function C, which is defined on the set of non-zero elements into gamma such that for all non-zero alpha well for all non-zero alpha beta in gamma um, three conditions are satisfied um, ac1 is yeah that is if alpha plus beta is also not zero, then C alpha plus beta is greater than to the minimum of C alpha and beta. Yeah, I'm just reflecting um, reflecting this uh, here. <coughs> um, AC two. Yeah, um, first, yeah, C of, of any integer multiple of alpha is, is C alpha for all, uh, well, of course, non zero, yeah, for non zero integers k, um, right? And in particular, C of minus alpha, so C is symmetric in the sense that C uh, or maybe a better word is even an even function p of minus alpha is p, is p alpha <clears throat> um, so these two properties together basically mean that you have a valuation on your order to billion group <clears throat> uh, and and this has um, this is already a useful thing to to um, to know <clears throat> And but now the, the the key distinguishing feature is that um, if um, if alpha happens to be positive, then um, <clears throat> alpha plus c alpha is bigger than c beta. So all the elements of this form are bigger than all the elements of that form. Um, <clears throat> um, right. Now there is, I want to mention, well, I want to list one more property, but that's not part of the definition. Um, <clears throat> but uh, if in addition for all, yeah. So if in addition, in addition, all uh, non-zero alpha beta um, we have the following or well you don't have to say non-zero because that will be part of the hypothesis hc uh, this is zero less than alpha less than beta implies alpha dagger greater than equal to beta dagger then we call um, then we call gamma up c an h asymptotic couple h asymptotic couple or an asymptotic couple of h type yeah? or 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I, I see alpha. Yeah, I, I was just going to introduce um, alpha dagger and as an alternative notation for psi alpha uh, or an asymptotic couple of H type. Um, right. Um, right. Okay. <clears throat> so, for example, Hardy. Yeah. No, I. I'm not. I shouldn't go too, um, too quickly over that. Um, yeah. So. If C is understood from the context, then I will just write alpha dagger, often write alpha dagger instead of Psi alpha. Yeah? So um, if, if C understood from the context, we often write, we often write alpha dagger instead of C alpha. The alpha and and likewise alpha prime instead of instead of alpha plus p alpha alpha plus p alpha <coughs> um, <coughs> right so this so you will see that um, um, right <coughs> yeah recall that in the case of a Hardy field. We have this um, gamma dagger is gamma prime minus gamma, um, and then uh, that's how we defined it. And of course, that means uh, that alpha prime is alpha plus alpha dagger. <coughs> um, right. Okay. Yeah. Maybe if uh, one more, two more things I want to mention here is. Um, <coughs> this last property that if alpha is greater than zero greater than zero implies alpha prime greater than zero is not a consequence of the other uh, axioms so but so it makes sense to um, um, say that uh, an asymptotic couple has small derivation if if it also satisfies this yeah. so uh, we say uh, gamma c has small derivation If uh, uh, for all alpha, for all alpha greater than zero, we have alpha prime greater than zero. Um, <coughs> right. Um, okay. And also, as usual, when you have a evaluation on an abelian group or on a you want to, um, it is sometimes convenient to define um, the valuation also at zero, right? By setting it equal to infinity there. So, um, um, <clears throat> right. Um, right. Uh, uh, yeah. As usual, the extent. C to all of gamma to a function and we add an extra element infinity to our uh, order the building group um, <clears throat> and order gamma infinity such that linearly order it such that omega sorry that infinity is bigger than everything in gamma <clears throat> Um, function uh, such that well let's call this function this extended function also c such that c of zero is infinity and then for example um, <clears throat> the first axiom ac1 alpha plus beta not zero implies all c alpha plus beta is greater than to the minimum of c alpha 
uh, and phi beta is then actually true um, <clears throat> for all alpha and beta, uh, not just for alpha, right. Then axiom AC1 becomes true for all alpha beta, <clears throat> whether zero or not. <clears throat> um, right. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, let's see. <clears throat> okay, so the basic facts about asymptotic couples. Um, yeah. Well, Rosalie established quite a few basic facts about asymptotic couples, but not all of them. Um, we found a few more, or we completed the picture, so to say. Um, <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> the basic facts. But they, they are all systematically developed in um, parts of our book, uh, the basic, and I can't really go through all the details here, but most of them are not, not are, fairly, are fairly short. Um, but let's say the basic facts about asymptotic couples. Couples are developed. Are, are established. Yeah, the full proofs um, <clears throat> in, uh, in sections, basically in three sections of our uh, 6.5, 9.1, and 9.2 of our book. I'll just write this ADH. Yeah. A for Aschenbrenn and D for Dries and H for Hooven, Van der Hooven. <clears throat> uh, but we can actually summarize a lot of it in, in a single picture. And that is extremely, for us at least, it is extremely useful to have had this picture in mind fairly early because we could just, it gives you an intuition about asymptotic couples, which, is, which these definitions by themselves might not uh, do. Um, so uh, we can summarize, and that is what I want to focus on this picture, to summarize much of it, of it um, in a, in a, in a, yeah, let me, ex uh, yeah. extremely useful, I can't, I really want to emphasize this, at least for us, Matthias and me. I think Joris uh, doesn't need it. He has a kind of powerful intuition that uh, allows him to bypass much of the asymptotic couple stuff. But for us, at least, it's um, <clears throat> it is extremely useful gadget. Um, an extremely useful picture. So that is what I want to uh, to, to draw. <clears throat> um, let's see. Yeah, feel feel free to uh, to interrupt. Oh wait, no, the picture follows. I see the picture will follow only after a few more basic facts have been mentioned. Um, so uh, that comes later. <clears throat> yeah, basic facts like the ones. Oh, maybe I should. I should keep this. What are these basic facts or some of them? Yeah. So gamma psi and an asymptotic couple. couple. Uh, so, uh, well, I mean, there are quite a lot, but um, let me just, 
mentions with alpha and beta. And of course, alpha beta will arrange over alpha beta gamma will, will be elements of this uh, ordered abelian group. <coughs> and alpha beta, if they are not zero, and also alpha different from beta, then alpha dagger minus beta dagger is, is little o of alpha minus beta. This means it is um, uh, less than one over n or times alpha minus beta for every positive integer n. <coughs> um, yeah, or maybe I should say it this way. I think also n times alpha dagger minus beta dagger is um, less than alpha minus beta for all n greater than equal to one. Um, the way we think of this is that the function psi is slowly varying. Yeah, C is this is the so-called what I what we call the slowly varying slowly varying right if if um, the difference between alpha dagger and beta dagger or c alpha and c beta whatever you prefer is very much smaller than the difference between alpha and beta <clears throat> so changing alpha to beta uh, makes also a change in general in alpha dagger and beta dagger but the difference is it makes this change that it makes it much smaller. <clears throat> um, um, to this map from gamma to, well, that's a sort of consequence of one. Uh, this is strictly increasing. Strictly increasing. And three, which is the most, um, which is a bit more subtle than the other two. <coughs> um, if alpha and beta are not zero, then n times <coughs> alpha dagger minus beta dagger is less than of the alpha. Uh, for all n, for all, all, all natural numbers n. Um, yeah, I mean this. Okay, one again uh, for proofs. I will simply refer to 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 our book. Or um, so far, you can find also everything in uh, the original papers by uh, Rosenlicht. <clears throat> Um, right. The, the the reason for three is uh, for for focusing on three is that it has as a consequence that you can always extend the uh, psi to the divisible whole of gamma. Uh, so consequence of three. Um, <clears throat> C extends uniquely to, um, well, let me also call the extension C uh, to C. So now, the, yeah, if you have an ordered abelian group, uh, you can go to its divisible hull. Right, you uh, you tensor with Q, or you, or alternatively you you simply uh, allow fractions alpha divided by n, where n is a positive integer, and add them in, in the usual in the obvious way, and extend the ordering also in the obvious way. Um, so this is. Extends uniquely to a function such that the resulting 
gadget is still an asymptotic couple such that so that's such that u gamma the divisible whole we have we now take the extended c <coughs> is an asymptotic couple um let me say um what is um yeah on the field level going to the divisible hull is like going to the real closure of a ordered field or the algebraic closure of a um of a valued field <clears throat> right if you go to a valued field um, and you go to its algebraic closure, then its uh, value group is the divisible hull of the original value group. <coughs> um, right. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, uniquely is, is the uniqueness is rather um, the uniqueness part of this is rather obvious because. Uh, among the actions is that psi of k alpha is psi of alpha, right? So if you have uh, an element in the divisible hull, um, then multiplying it by some positive integer, uh, it becomes an element in gamma. And so then the psi of the original thing must be equal to the psi of the multiplied thing. <clears throat> um, but then to prove that with the resulting psi is actually um, defines an asymptotic couple. You 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 need this fact here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, right. So now uh, let's give you an example. Well, example is already suggested here for um, mm -hmm. in the case of Hardy fields. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Oh yeah, I should, I should, I should not. Uh, example. Let A be a Hardy field. Field um, with its natural evaluation. With its natural evaluation. <coughs> um, Right. Then, uh, <clears throat> well, then uh, gamma C, C alpha, well, C gamma is the evaluation of uh, G dagger for C gamma is the evaluation of G dagger for G in H. Be not asymptotic to one yeah. um, is an asymptotic couple, <laughs> and in fact, it's of H type. Yeah, the reason for calling um, for introducing this terminology of H asymptotic couple is that Hardy fields, their asymptotic couple is of H type, uh, is an H asymptotic, is an H asymptotic couple. With small derivation, as um, of course that is if that comes from this here, with small derivation. Yeah. So a lot of asymptotics is simply reflected in this um, asymptotic couple of um, of H, and that is the. Um, thing that makes it useful <clears throat> um, right okay yeah um, well <clears throat> so
Oh, yeah. Huh. I guess I'll have to postpone the picture to, to Thursday. Um, but from the picture, you, if you really study the picture and internalize it, uh, a lot of things become very clear. <clears throat> um, and a lot of the things that I mentioned will then be vi uh, will be visible, so to say. Um, so we found it extremely useful, the picture. <clears throat> so this is to get you interested in what I'm going to picture on, on Thursday. Um, <clears throat> Well, maybe. No, I think I'm already almost out of time. So let me just add one more. Um, well, of course, if you take, you can do the same thing with the field of ten series T that I talked about in my um, in my um, workshop lecture. Um, Again, it's a valued field with, the, uh, with its natural valuation. <clears throat> and um, uh, it also has all these uh, properties that allow you to define uh, this function P on the value group. And um, it's again an H asymptotic cover with small derivation. Um, <clears throat> okay. Yeah, more generally, <clears throat> there is a we introduced in our book, it turns out, for various reasons, it turns out to be quite a useful notion also. Um, define, define an asymptotic field. And this is much bigger than Hardy fields or H fields, uh, much wider notion, asymptotic fields. Um, to be to be a uh, valued differential field. For the moment, this is just a differential field with evaluation on it, <coughs> um, <coughs> without imposing any um, interaction between evaluation and the derivation. Uh, but such such that but here we are imposing uh, an interaction, namely such that uh, for all non-zero of t in value differential field. Oh, I should give it a name, right? Uh, differential field k. <clears throat> that is all non-zero f g and k. If um, f is strictly dominated by g, even only if f prime is strictly dominated by g prime. Now, um, that if you have a valued field, it is useful to all, yeah, for any valued field, for any valued field, field f is by definition means f, the valuation of f bigger than the valuation of G and uh, F dominated by G is simply an abbreviation for the valuation of F greater than the valuation of G and, uh, and so on. Yeah. Um, all these asymptotic um, relations, domination, strict domination, asymptotically equivalence, um, <clears throat> um, Are just another way of talking about a valued, a valued field. <clears throat> um, Excuse me. I guess you ask the vibration to be non-zero for this equivalence. Uh, wait a second. Do I? Uh, ah, yes. Even more for all non-zero FG. Um, I want the valuations to be 
uh, greater than zero. Yeah, um, G with uh, F, E, if they are both infinitesimals, F, thanks, yeah. But you're right, it, it then follows that this is this equivalence also holds if F and G are um, not asymptotic to one. Um, right, yeah. So therefore, let me say that again. Um, um, Fg not asymptotic to one and non zero implies implies a, yeah that of course very implies this equivalence <clears throat> right that's a consequence um, anyway. Uh, Yeah, okay, and then you can associate to, um, it follows also that if F and G are asymptotic and not, as, but not asymptotic to one, then the valuation of F prime or F dagger is uniquely determined by the valuation of F, and so you have an asymptotic couple. Yeah, I already exceeded by, let me just write down uh, one sentence that, um, so to any asymptotic field, and there are interesting asymptotic fields that are not, for example, if you take the algebraic closure of a Hardy field, uh, it's not a Hardy field anymore because you have a joint, it's not ordered even, but it's still an asymptotic field. So to any asymptotic field, um, uh, we associate K, you associate its asymptotic couple. And it is an asymptotic couple, uh, gamma psi. Gamma is the value group. Gamma is the value group of K. And uh, psi uh, of uh, gamma is, is the valuation of G dagger. For G in non zero and not asymptotic to one, right? And again, this makes sense and, and it is an asymptotic couple. Anyway, um, I will stop here. And the picture that really incorporates uh, uh, very much information, I will start with on Thursday. <clears throat> yeah, sorry for exceeding my time. <clears throat> Okay. Hmm? Oh yeah, wait, I, ah, I, I'm sorry, I, uh, I am confused. Uh, of course, we start at 10 past nine, so I, so uh, I can actually go on till, uh, till 10. Uh, uh, in my mind, I was starting at nine and had to go to now 50. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so, so maybe I can actually draw the picture and then uh, elaborate on it um, on uh, on on Monday, on uh, Thursday. Um, Okay. Uh, this is the x axis. And this is, well, you can think of this as the x axis and the y axis. And um, <clears throat> I have to, uh, to single out a sort of unit element one and one and minus one. Yeah, so so this is this is gamma, right? The, the gamma axis. Well, both are gamma axes, but this is like the x axis, and that is the y axis. And um, 
Now, uh, uh, let me see. <clears throat> okay. Let me go here and at equal distance, so to say. And now, It's really impossible to draw the picture accurately because, so to say, um, what I'm drawing here is the graph of gamma dagger or of psi. Yeah, this is the, the graph of the psi function, if you like. Um, there is a there is a sort of gap here. Uh, if you think of it as a kind of black hole. Right, so this is a graph of the Psi function, so to say. Um, so the, and now the, or, or no, no. Yes? The, the graph is symmetric. Uh, it's it's a, with respect to the Y function, to the Y axis, right? Uh, yeah, okay. you, you said, okay, I'm sorry, you said that it's an even function, okay. Uh, then this is the graph of C, the graph. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, this is the X, this is the independent variable, and this is the dependent variable, if you like. Okay. Uh, okay, and now the, um, now, oh yeah, it, I see that it's already, the blackboard is too small to, to picture the the other graph I want to draw is the um, the graph of the um, the derivative <clears throat> so this is the graph of the graph of of the I, uh, c plus the identity uh, yeah identity plus gamma plus p <clears throat> yeah or if you are if you want you can also think of this as gamma dagger and this is gamma prime um <clears throat> right of course they are not defined here at zero um and what happens here nearby <laughs> turns out to be absolutely important to understand um, a lot of the information about uh, a hardy field a lot of the important information is hidden in what happens around this black hole if you like <laughs> um, <clears throat> right well i think i'll i'll stop here but uh you could already start thinking about this picture, but I will explain the various features that you can see here. Uh, of course, you already see the symmetry of the of Psi, right? Psi, or the, the evenness of the function Psi uh, in this picture. Uh, psi of minus alpha is equal to Psi of alpha. Um, you also see that this function gamma prime is strictly increasing in this, and that C is increasing on the negative part of gamma and decreasing on the positive part, but only decreasing in the weak sense. Anyway, I'll, I'll uh, come back to this picture and um, on Monday. Sorry, on Monday, on Thursday. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Oh yeah, of course, if there are any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer. I, I wanted. I, I will say something about that. Um, there is a, the theory of 
H asymptotic couples with small derivation has a model companion. And the model, I will explain what the model companion is. And uh, in order to get quantifier elimination for the model companion, you need a predicate, an extra predicate. Yes, um, that's right. That is, that is, um, and the extra predicate is everything that is, that is below this. It's the downward closed set that's, that ends here. That's an, you need an extra predicate for that. You cannot uh, avoid that. 